السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أتمنى آه لكم ووش يو جود داي جود ويك جود مانث جود يير نحن نوب بين كومينيكاتين فور ذا لاست 3 ويكس أور مور سينس هاف بين ترابلينج تو ديفرنت كانتريز ساتش أز إيراك وي فيزيتد أربيل موصل بغداد Ramadi in Ambar, then we visited Bosnia, where we uh, visited Sarajevo, Srebrenica, and some smaller villages there. Today we are talking about something called responsibility. Responsibility is a Libyan. A Libyan is a name which will explain why I call this talk is about this name, which is belonged to Aleppo. Aleppo is a city in Syria. This is Louis the, the Ninth, the King of France. I'm just going to some historical background first before I start the discussion. And after the Crusade, were fighting in the Middle East in Jerusalem over Jerusalem. He wanted to come back to conquer Egypt in 1254, but he was defeated in the north of Egypt in a place called, a city called Mansura, and they captured him and they imprisoned him as a hostage in uh, Dar, the house of Ibn Luqman in this city. This was the French uh, uh, vision to take Egypt because it's cross uh, road from the rest of the world. Next one, please. This is, of course, everybody knows who is this. This is the emperor of France, 1798, Napoleon Bonaparte, who came to Egypt. The same thing. He wanted to have a base in Egypt again to break the line of uh, trade of the English uh, tradesmen to go to India. So he came with his army to Egypt, 1798, in July 1798, and they came to Cairo, and uh, there was a lot of resistance against uh, the French army at that time. And the first revolution against the French occupation at that time was in October uh, 1798. It was the Azhar revolution, where they were actually fighting the French army. Napoleon Bonaparte won the fight and entered the Azhar, his soldier, with the horses, killed 30 of the scholars there, uh, then uh, hanged about 80 people who were uh, holding arms in their hands. Then, the end of the day of this uh, uprise, in October 1798, killed more than 2,500 Egyptian people in the fight. This was the first resistant towards Napoleon Bonaparte when they came to Egypt in 1798. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte in 1799 uh, realized that his invasion to Egypt is failing. Okay, so he has to pull out and go to uh, appoint somebody else called his deputy who called the Clipper. Clipper took over the, the leadership of the French army in Egypt, and the second uprise came, second one please, second uprise came in uh, uh, 1800, in March 1800, where the Egyptian from a place called uh, uh, Bula, the area called Bula, were actually fighting the French uh, heavily to try to uh, resist them. In the first uh, revolution in 1798, uh, it was because of the killing of the governor of Alexandria, Muhammad Qurayim, at that time. The second one, people were trying to have a high hope that since Napoleon Bonaparte, the emperor, has left, they can actually uh, uh, have another uprise. But actually, with the heavy artillery, of the French from uh, Al Muqattam Mountain or Qattamiya Heights, they destroyed the whole area called uh, Bula. And in the first one also, uh, they were with the heavy artillery, were, sh were, were, were bombing 
uh, Al Azhar from uh, Sultan Hassan as well as Al Qala, who bombing Cairo, not Al Azhar as well. So in these two, the Egyptians have lost the fight against the French. But actually, what Kleber did in the second one in the area called Bulaq, he did a lot of massacres more than what we can see nowadays in, in Bosnia by the Serb or in Rohingya by others at that time. This excited the young man called uh, uh, Suleiman Al Halabi. Is, have you got his photograph? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Suleiman Halabi was uh, a young man from Aleppo, Syria, and he came to study in Al Azhar University at that time, uh, religious studies. And he was so angry and so upset to what have happened in the Second Revolution at the time of Kleper, which has lasted for one month from March to April, uh, from 20th March to 21st of April, 17, uh, uh, 1800. And he made himself responsible to defend al Azhar, to defend Cairo, to defend Egypt, to defend humanity against the barbarism of the French army at that time. The barbarism of the French army and the uh, terrorism of the French army at that time. He went on uh, 14th of June uh, 1800 to the back, the garden and the backyard of uh, Kleper as a ruler of, of, of Egypt at that time in Cairo, and he stabbed him four or five times in the head. Though they arrested him, the French army arrested him, they made a court, a military court, and they charged him for killing the leader. And uh, the penalty was before impaling him, putting him on a stake. Next one. Before putting him on a stake, impaling him. So they have to burn his right hand first. And before that, they have to kill everybody, about everybody they suspected they were supporting Suleiman al-Halabi. So Suleiman Halim made himself responsible for the whole of Egypt and the humanity to stop this kind of terroristic barbarism of the French army. His penalty was to burn his right hand, uh, to, to see his, his, his colleague being killed or beheaded first, then to burn his right hand, then to impale him on this stake. And it's, they, they avoided the, 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 the needle of the stake to touch any big organ to kill him and he was alive for about four to six hours and before he died. This was the responsibility of Suleiman Halabi. That's why I called it, I called it, I called it responsibility is a Libyan or responsibility is Halabi to honor the martyrdom of Suleiman Halabi, the 24 year old man who young man who stood up to make him responsible to defend humanity, to stop the barbarism of the French army. Next one. What we look nowadays to kings, queens, presidents, uh, prime ministers, uh, ministers, leaders of political parties, leader of religious party, leader, 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 leaders. Every one of them or everyone else love to sit on this seat. But without realizing that they have a stake, will be impaled in them while they are sitting on such a seat. Very uh, difficult to describe, but this impalement is a torture in life and torture in life to come if they do not fulfill their responsibility. People fight to kill their mothers, to kill their fathers, to kill their sons, to kill their daughters, to kill their brothers, to sit on such a seat. For what? To be impaled by the stick. Next one, please. This is a kind of uh, the throne of kings, queens, uh, uh, emirs, uh, sheikhs, princes, uh, sheikhs, presidents, and others. See all this? Stake coming out, stakes coming out, and whoever sit on this kingdom, kingdom, 
throne, he has all of this in his body. It's not a joke. It's a reality. But we love to be tortured by themselves because we have this sadistic feeling of having the love to be in power, the love to be in control, the love to be in charge of everybody else. But we do not realize that we are impaled by all these uh, uh, stakes coming to our body. And we love it. The, 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 the desire to be tortured by a stake is less than the desire to have the fun of becoming a president of a king or a prince or whatever you call it in this time, especially in the, the underdeveloped countries in different parts of the world. Uh, this, is a, uh, 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 this is something which I didn't write. It is uh, uh, as much as you become aware of what's surrounding you, as much as somebody else will impale you, whether as a friend, a son, a colleague, or enemy. Awareness has a price. Responsibility has a price. Like we said, Suleiman from Aleppo. And leadership has a price. So be careful of that because it's always having the price of being impaled by others. Let me go with you in some definition which I wrote uh, two days ago about responsibility. What do you mean by responsibility? Responsibility is a message to deliver a role to take and a mission to accomplish. Responsibility is a manner, behavior, it's an attitude, it's a partnership. Responsibility is feeling dreams and vision of whom? Of the people who, may, who you are made responsible for. Responsibility is love, service, and sincerity. Loving whom? Not loving, uh, can you get me the, uh, the chair, the big chair? Not loving this, but loving the people. Not loving this, but people sometimes love this and hate the people. Responsibility, leave it, leave it. Responsibility is accountability. Accountability, the referral point is transparency. You have to be transparent to the public. You have to be waiting to be asked by anybody, everybody, no matter who are they, no matter what their status in the country. This is responsibility. Responsibility is honesty, sincerity, and Clear conscious. Whoever has become a responsible for a community, he has to have a clear conscious. A conscious which is pure conscious, sincere in his service or his service to the community and to the citizen of the country. Responsibility is who is who are you accountable for or to? You are accountable for. Every citizen in the country has the right to stand up and ask you the difficult question and you have no right not to answer to him or to her. Responsibility is patience. Patience on the needs, to fulfill the needs of the community. And it's something to make jihad against yourself or against your desire, to resist your desire, to control your desire, and to be in charge of your desire. Responsibility is obedience, following, and excellence. Obedience to the Lord that he created you. Following the need of the community. Following the need of the country. The needs of the country. And following the desire of everybody to build with you their own country. Also, it's excellence. Whenever you do something, you excel in doing it for the sake of the Lordship of God and for the sake of the service of the country that you are trying to serve or the community you are trying to serve. When we look at this again, the more responsible you become, the more stake will be you. The one who is responsible for 100 million, 
the one responsible for 50 million, the one who is responsible for 20 million or a million or a few hundred thousand will be responsible for every dream and every need that each and every one of them needs from you. So you can imagine that you'd be surrounded by 100 million dreams or 50 million dreams or 50 or 70 or 80 million dreams or 1 million or a few thousand or whatever it is. Responsibility also is trust. You are trustworthy. Is a credibility of the individual. Integrity. Is chastity. You know chastity, what means chastity is? Your relation with women and others. And we have to be trustworthy as well. Responsibility is mercy, justice, and equality. You are not above anybody. You are like anybody. You are appointed by anybody to become responsible for anybody and everybody. Responsibility is the living of the individual, is freedom and social justice. This is some definitions of what do mean by responsibility. Second definition is talking who is the responsible man. They make me responsible for this job. Such a president or such a king or such a prince or such a prime minister or such a, 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 who is he or who is she? She is a servant before the community. They are doing this service to make the citizens of the country happy. They are employees paid by the taxpayers' money. It's not their own money if they are kings, even if they are kings or princes or sheikhs. It's not their own money. It's the people's money. It is advisor, faithful advisor to the citizens. He is the one who is the keeper, the one who is looking after the resources of the society and the country and the nation. To be humble. Like why? When it comes to the ma money of the poor people, take your hands off it. Such an individual who does not sleep, have sleepless night, because he wants everybody else to sleep happily, does not feel or she does not feel tired for the sake of making people less tired. He is the one who is going around to help the needy, the orphans, and the widows. He is the one who stands up at night to look at how he or she can achieve the goals of every dream at the back of the mind of any citizen. He is the one who will be asked more than anybody else. He is the one who will listen more. Who then will be asked more and more and more by God. Who then will be responsible for the climate in the country, for the mountains, for the water, for the lakes, for the habitat, for the animals, for the birds, for everything, every creation in the country that he is going to govern or the society that he is going to cover or become responsible for. And this is the meaning of being a responsible king, queen. You are not a king to step on the dreams or the foot of the people who pay your salary. Or the people who appoint you. The people who become a servant for this is the responsibility that we should know and understand. Next, please. This is some verses from the Quran talking about uh, the trust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed it, if you can read it, showed it to mountains, to uh, samawat, to skies and everything. And they said, no, 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 we cannot carry this responsibility. He listened it and gave it to the man like you and me and we're so happy because they are going to call us kings, princes, princesses, presidents and others. But 
This is out of our ignorance and out of our unjust, being unjust to ourselves. Second verse in the Quran, stop them. Indeed, they are to be questioned. Where they are going to be questioned? Before God. And this is how one of the, the, the fifth caliph of Muslims actually was, when he was appointed, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, when he was appointed, uh, he locked himself in his room for three days crying. His wife was over the moon, Fatima bint Abdul Malik, over the moon, my husband is the king of the kings, the president of the presidents, the, everywhere from China to Spain. When he came after three nights, his wife looked at his face and she, he looked miserable. He said, what's wrong with you, my husband? You are the caliph. He said, oh woman, don't you understand? Don't you realize that I became responsible for those people? Who are the people who are talking about? The poor hungry. The hungry poor. Okay. The old men with many children. The broken-hearted orphan, the lonely widow, the sick, the, the prisoners who are put in jail unjustly, and the others, and the others, and the others, and the others, in the ummah, or the nation of Muhammad. And I will be responsible for every and each one of them. And I realize that I will be questioned and stop them. Indeed, they are to be questioned. And who's questioning me? Is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In front of whom? In front of Allah. That's why my woman, I looked myself in for three days to prepare myself for such a day which I might fail to respond to the questions of Muhammad before Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's another uh, statement in the Quran. Don't you, do you think that you will be going away with it? No questioning? No accountability on you? Even if you uh, missed it in, in life, there's a life to come. There are angels in the grave and there's God to question you. Nothing will be actually missed. You will be they will get you back, whether we like it or not. This is another hadith by uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu, about the Prophet He said that oh, each one of you is guardian or responsible. The father is guardian for the children. The shepherd is guardian for the sheep. And the king is guardian for the people. And so, and so, and so, and so on. We are responsible for how many people that we are looking after. Responsible will be questioned by Allah and by the people as well. Responsibility is obligation, is a trial and test, and the affliction as well. Okay, next. Three types of responsibility. There's religious responsibility towards your religion. There is social towards your community and there is ethical towards the community and towards yourself as well. You have to, we have to build ourselves from within to be responsible for others. Otherwise, don't touch it because it will impale you. Don't touch it because the stake of responsibility will impale you. And this, is, this impalement will be very, 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 very difficult, especially when we meet with the Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's some of people, as a king, he's responsible for his own people. As a soldier here, he is responsible with his life to protect his country or his city from within the area he's standing on. He's responsible. As a teacher, he's responsible for every student, every people, to teach them the subject clearly and responsible for their excellence as well. Next, please. There's a father. He's responsible for his children. 
Why he have children? To bring them up and to guide them and to make them good citizens of the country. The shepherd, as I said, responsible for the flock, for every sheep, the policeman, is responsible for the welfare of every citizen and the safety of every citizen. The doctor is responsible for the health of the patient and so on. And this is the meaning of being responsible. Responsibility is impalement. Many stake can come to you during life and after life. Anything else? Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be said that how to take responsibility. Uh, know what is your job, definitely, because that's why you have job description. What's required, what is required from you. Uh, concern yourself with what you are responsible and be responsible for what you are responsible for. Don't make your job as a routine. You have to be innovative. Don't postpone today's work into tomorrow. Do it as it is. Love your work. Love what you do to do what you love, which is a say. It's not my say. Somebody else said it. But you love your work. For, uh, to, to, and, and improve it later on. Uh, give your work enough time and thought. You see, when we look at the, the, the average uh, 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 working hour of the people in certain areas of the Middle East, we find it 45 minutes, 50 minutes, one hour maximum a day. Just haram. Because the money is paid to you by the government is for the seven hours. If you think that the, your government is corrupt, if you think that yeah, your, 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 your superior is corrupt your superior will, will be asked about his corruption and you'll be asked about the time you waste and the money you take it's haram also benefits of responsibility to feel if, if you are responsible you have to feel that actually you are going to fulfill a mission and you're going to uh, uh, help people's God okay uh, to gain confidence when somebody make you Responsible for a team or something, you become responsible, you become confident in yourself. You build the community through it. You give the independence, freedom of, to, to the individuals. And you prepare the future leaders of the society as well. So these are what do we mean by responsibility. Why I call it Alipian, Alipian to respect the life, the dignity, the credibility of Suleiman, the young man from Aleppo who stood up against the French barbarism, terrorism, active, terrorist activity, 17, 1798, 1799, 1800 in Egypt, and he stood up and took the responsibility to defend humanity against the barbarism of the invaders. That's why I called it uh, uh, responsibility is Alibian. Okay. The second thing is actually responsibility is a stake at the body or the stakes impaled in the body of anybody who fights with his life, with his treasure, with his wealth, with his dream or with her dream to become something. She or he will be impaled from any part of the body. But they love to be tortured by the, the chair. Can you get me the chair? They love to be tortured by such a chair. They love it. They love it. I don't know how. They love it. That's, I call, actually, that's why if you cannot fulfill the duty of responsibility, do not touch it. Because accountability by God will be in this life, by people business in this life, and by God will be in the life to come. Thank you very much for being with me today. And God bless you. And inshallah, I'll see you maybe next week from different city in the world. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.